if you scroll down the toolbox, you will find a section of containers. I'm going to expand that by clicking the little triangle on the left. And inside the containers group are two controls we're going to look at today, which is the group box and the panel. And I'm going to start with the group box. And we draw a group box just like we would draw a button, just from one corner to the diagonally opposite corner. And one property of the group box is the text property, which is a sort of a caption at the upper left of our group box. I'm just going to call this one buttons. It will be my text. And we can resize that group box. Typically what we do for group boxes is we create controls inside the group box. So I might put uh, maybe a label here. And then a text box. And then we we'll select both of those with shift click and do a control C to copy them to the clipboard. And then I'm going to select my group box. So it has the handles, it's the active control, and I'm going to paste control V. And it will paste what's on the clipboard into the center of that group box. I'm just going to move it over here to the side a little bit, change my label, and I will paste one more time in selecting my group box, control V to paste. And of course I'd come along and name those text boxes. Uh, but what I want to show you is that if you move the group box, everything inside that group box moves with it. So it's a great way to be able to organize controls that should be grouped together, hence the name group box. I'm going to go ahead and select each of these controls. And I'm just going to drag them outside of the group box. And now they're no longer part of that group box. Now, if I cut those controls to the clipboard, and my form is selected and I paste, they are on the form and not in the group box. Notice I can move the group box and those controls do not go with it. However, if my group box is selected and I paste, they go into the group box. So just something to be aware of. I'm going to delete all of those controls. I can also take existing controls and drag them into the group box. And now they are part of that group. In the same way, I could take those controls and drag them out. So the group box is largely used for aesthetics. Uh, you can change the back color of it, but you'll notice the color, because of the text property, doesn't really conform greatly to the border of our uh, group box. So I typically don't change the color, I just use it as a grouping. And if you wanted to use a colored group, I'd probably use a panel. Panels work the exact same way. Except they don't have a text property. There is no caption up here at the top. But here I can change the back color. I can also adjust the border style. And we have choices of none, fixed single, or fixed 3D. And just as I did earlier, I could take my buttons and drag them into this panel. And I can move that panel around. The buttons remain capable of being coded. And uh, they're not child objects of the panel or the group box. They are objects of the form. But by putting them in the group box, it allows us to manipulate these. And I could even write code that would hide those objects when the form starts. 
So for example, I can go into my form load, and actually let me go back and give this panel a name to refer to in code. Right now it's panel one. I'm just going to call it PNL demo. And then my code in the form load will be PNL demo dot visible equals false. And I might create another button. I'm going to duplicate this button. I'm going to select the forms, paste it on the form itself. And uh, I'm going to set the text of this button to reveal. And we'll name it BTN reveal. And then my code for that, I'm going to set the visible property of PNL demo to true. And let me run my application. So when I start the application, you see that that panel has disappeared. It's not visible. But if I click the reveal button, I can bring that panel back up. So group boxes and panels are great ways of being able to hide controls until the appropriate contextual time in which you want those to be available to your user. I'm going to end my application. We haven't looked at radio buttons yet. But that's another control that's often used with group boxes and panels. When we place radio buttons on our form, they are what we call mutually exclusive. If I choose one radio button, it is going to unchoose any other radio buttons. So I'm going to have one radio button selected at a time. Well, what if I want to have these three radio buttons on the uh, left be mutual exclusive and these three on the right be mutual exclusive. Well the way we do that is to put them inside group boxes or panels. And so here these are mutually exclusive together but it's not affecting the three radio buttons over on the right. In the same way here. These do not affect the ones on the left. Now uh, just for a little bit of information here, one of the differences between a radio button and a checkbox, which is what I have in this group box down here, is that radio buttons are mutually exclusive, checkboxes are not. And I can select more than one checkbox. So that is the principal purpose of using group boxes and panels, aside from the aesthetic values that they can give you in terms of just grouping things together. We will look at working with radio buttons and group boxes in another video.